Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are going to be repotting some Phalaenopsis orchids that I just purchased from the flower shop and aren't they just so so pretty? Well, the problem is they're not very happy in their pots. As you will see, we have some root issues, some very old medium we need to get rid of. Even though these orchids are brand new, they haven't been treated properly in the flower shop as it happens quite commonly. So today we will give them a good start into fresh medium. Today's video is sponsored by repotme.com, which provides everything you could need to properly grow an orchid from medium to fertilizer to pest control and even stakes for flower spikes and other accessories which an orchid grower could need. If you're also growing African violets or bonsais, they do have something for you as well, so I'll link them down below in the description. Feel free to check their store at any time. As many of you might already know, we are partnered for the past half a year and I'm very excited to work with their Phalaenopsis Media today. I will go step by step through the process, let you guys know what you should do and what you shouldn't do, and I will also go through why there are different types of medium. For a beginner, it can be slightly confusing, but trust me, everything is very, very easy, and I'm gonna tell you all about it today. Alrighty, let's start with the big girl. This is your standard size Phalaenopsis orchid. Most orchids at the flower shop or garden center will be similar size-wise. The spikes are typically long and they're typically staked, and also the orchid herself has really broad leaves a really nice dark color and quite thick roots. The problem with many flower shops or garden centers is that they don't know how to properly water these orchids. Usually they tend to overwater these orchids, meaning they water them too frequently and then they just leave them standing in a pool of water. So it is not uncommon to see very unhealthy roots. These particular ones are dead already and you can see throughout the pots here and there quite a few roots which are absolutely not healthy. They look mushy or brown. All of these roots are not alive anymore or are very very unhappy and waterlogged. The pot itself doesn't help us much either because it doesn't have ventilation holes, it only has drainage holes and also this medium might be very very old, it might be acidic and very toxic already for the orchid roots, also it can be very crumbly and suffocating for the roots and in the end it is not uncommon to get orchids which look very very pretty but have very very bad root issues. In very unhappy cases you can see signs on the flowers as well, particularly the buds. Here I have bud blast, you can see these two buds are just shriveling and dropping, they will not open and if we don't do anything about this orchid, we might actually lose all of the buds and even all the flowers. Orchids are epiphytic plants, meaning they don't grow in soil. In nature, their ancestors grow attached to tree trunks or branches. They're constantly bathed in air, not in soggy soil. And even though typically it's not advisable to repot orchids which are in full bloom because the blooms might actually fade faster, in many cases it is absolutely necessary for the health of the orchid. As you can see I already have buds dropping and in the end we all love flowers but we do want our orchid to be healthy and repay us with flowers for years to come. For this orchid, I will be going with the Phalaenopsis Monterey Dark Imperial Orchid Mix coupled with the Slotted Orchid Pot from repotme.com which comes with drainage and aeration slots already made, so you don't have to customize it in any way. So with that said, let's just get to unpotting this orchid and get rid of this old and broken down medium. When repotting orchids, a separate tray is very very useful because in this way you can catch all of the old medium, you will not make a mess on your table and you can easily dispose of it and wash the tray. Also we will need a pair of scissors or pruners which are sharp. If you are working with multiple plants, it is a very good idea to sterilize the pruners or scissors before using it with our orchid. To sterilize your cutting tools, you can use medicinal alcohol on a paper towel or a piece of cotton and just rub the blades of the cutting tool very well or even better you can use a flame but please be very careful not to hurt yourself also if you are a younger orchid grower please don't play with fire always have parents supervising whatever you do or just use alcohol it is much safer than fire and personally I love to use gloves to get the orchid out of its spot it's actually really easy I like to grab the orchid by the stakes it's never a good idea to hold the orchid by its leaves. If the orchid doesn't have flower spikes or stakes, you can always grab it from 
the base of the stem, never grab it by the top leaves especially. They're not very strong and you might actually rip them off. Next up, it's a great idea to just squeeze a little bit the plastic pot. In this way, we are making sure that the roots are not stuck to the pot so we won't rip them off. And now it's time to pull up gently as we squeeze the pot. And here is our orchid. I can already see so, so many unhappy roots which need to come off. Also, I am seeing a different type of medium in the center, which is not healthy for the root ball. So the first thing that I will do is try to make sure that all of this bark is falling off by just massaging a little bit the root system. So at this point I have removed quite a lot of my medium, almost everything, so I'm just gonna go and throw all of this away, wash my tray and come back to cut away all of the dead roots. And here we are, I cleaned my table and washed my tray. Another thing that I did was rinse the root system of the orchid under the faucet. When they are wet, the roots of a Phalaenopsis become more flexible and more easy to manage. Also bark detaches itself much, much faster. In my case, the orchid was already wet when I started working with it, so I didn't need to pre-soak it. But to further help me in removing the old medium, the rinse was actually very beneficial. Now it is however time to remove the dead roots. Removing dead roots on a Phalaenopsis orchid is actually crucial because they don't serve any purpose anymore, they don't absorb water, they don't absorb nutrients, furthermore what they will do is just decompose in the new medium and help spoil it faster. The easiest way to figure out which roots are dead which are alive is to press on them. Visually sometimes it's harder to tell because even dead roots can still be green. Let's take for example this root. If we press on it, it doesn't feel spongy in any way, it is rigid and look-wise it does look full of substance. This is a perfectly fine root and we shouldn't cut it. However, let's take a look at this root. Even though it might appear green, visually it doesn't appear as plump as the other one and if we try to squeeze on it, look what happens. It is very very mushy and furthermore, when we pull on it, all that's left behind is a string. This is the actual root of the orchid. This is an outer coating which helps with water absorption, but when the root dies, this outer coating becomes mushy and in the end, the entire root dies. So something like this needs to be cut away. Strings such as these will not remain alive without the velamen, so we can absolutely cut them away. And all we need to do is just go around the root system and see what roots are mushy and dead and just cut everything away. Some of them will be more easily recognizable, others will not. But if you're not sure, just press on the root. Sometimes you'll find roots with only their tip dead, case in which just cut the tip. But as I was saying, do not cut into the green. That will leave a open wound. We don't want that. With roots, always cut into the already dead tissue, leaving all the healthy green behind. One more thing I would like to add, if you can see, I left on the white or yellow roots. These are perfectly fine, you don't need to cut these roots as long as they're stiff. The reason they are white or yellow is that they didn't receive sun through the pot, therefore they didn't photosynthesize. Orchid roots are capable of photosynthesizing, but if they don't receive light, they will not have chlorophyll pigment. Otherwise, they're perfectly healthy roots, they absorb water and nutrients, and you absolutely don't need to cut them. For this orchid, I will be using the 5 inch or approximately 13 centimeter slotted pot from Repot Me. I have an entire video dedicated to these pots and also I talk more about the need for ventilation slits. So if you want to see it, check it down below in the description, I will add it there. Generally speaking, when we repot Phalaenopsis orchids, we need to go for a same size pot or one size up. The Phalaenopsis Monterey Dark Imperial mix that I will be using is a mix between medium size Orchiara Monterey Pine Bark, which is a very good quality bark. It degrades much slower than many, many other mixes on the market. It also contains Hydraton, which is a brand of Leca, a material many of you know from my channel, Large Sponge Rock, which is an inorganic material which will not decompose, and Triple A New Zealand Sphagnum Moss, which is again a very, very good quality sphagnum moss that degrades much much slower. This mix 
is best suitable for those homes or environments in which temperatures are not very high but rather temperate or even cool. Also places with high humidity will benefit from this medium and the reason why I am choosing it is because I'm dealing with a rather big Phalaenopsis orchid which requires a big pot. Bigger pots generally retain more water than smaller pots no matter the medium. So I do consider it to be the perfect choice for this orchid. First, we need to place a layer of medium on the bottom of the pot and then we need to arrange the orchid inside the pot as centered as possible. So afterwards, I'm just going to pour medium around the root system a little bit at a time while maintaining the orchid in place. One way to make the medium fall down to the bottom is by tapping on the pot and also squeezing. Just try not to leave very, very big air pockets, which can provide too much dryness, but small air pockets are absolutely fine. And I believe we are pretty much done. Let us inspect the root system and the pot. Let's see if we have big air pockets that we missed. And I don't see any big air pockets. We are good to go. Repot Me Media always comes pre-moistened, so you don't have to worry about dust everywhere. And they also come in this Ziploc bag, which you can absolutely seal and use at a later date. The next orchid we're gonna repot is actually a very, very sick little orchid. This is a mini Phalaenopsis. Some of you might note them as the Espresso orchids or Espresso Phalaenopsis. They are miniature versions of the big Phalaenopsis, but I think we can tell that there is something wrong with this orchid. I have fading flowers, although I do still have buds, or I used to have buds, even the buds are dropping. If we take a look at the root system, I think we can tell there is something very, very wrong. There is no green root to be seen here. Maybe one or two here, but this orchid is in dire need of help and a good repot. This medium we see here is actually yet another plug. This is Coco Husk or Coco Choir, which was very, very compressed. The problem with this type of medium is that it does not allow for the root system to have any air inside. And also it is so hard and dense that the orchids have issues growing inside it. If you can see, most of the roots were growing outside of the pot. Being that orchids are epiphytic, they can actually grow on different media or different surfaces. But this is absolutely not suitable for a pot, especially one without any extra aeration slits. And also, it is not a very adequate medium for home growing. For this tiny orchid, I will go with a tiny pot. This is the 3 inch or approximately 8 centimeter slotted pot from Repot Me. And yes, they do come in different colors as well, which is always fun, particularly if we don't want to use decorative containers. And as medium, I will go for the Phalaenopsis AAA Imperial Orchid Mix. This medium contains AAA New Zealand sphagnum moss, hence the name, large sponge rock and also medium cork chips. It is a medium designed to retain a lot more water than the dark mix that we used prior to this one while still maintaining things airy. Sphagnum moss generally, even though it retains a lot of water, is an airy mix and a soft material. Roots can absolutely go through it, not like the cocoa husk we just saw. As you might guess, this mix is very suited for those environments which don't have a lot of humidity or which have generally warmer temperatures. But not only, I do find this medium suited for small pots. We are working with a very, very tiny pot now because we do have a tiny orchid and I believe the setup will be just perfect for this orchid. And here we are, Sally, this is all I could say from the root system of this orchid. Just like with the other orchid, I cut away all of the dead mushy roots, I rinsed the root system at the sink, and this is all I'm left with. Under normal circumstances, I would actually cut the flower spike at this point, because it is draining a lot of energy from the mother plant. But I do have these two roots, which might still sustain the flower spike. I will need to observe this orchid, and in case it goes limpy or the leaves become shriveled, I will cut the flower spike. But if they don't and the orchid recovers very fast, then I will be enjoying the flowers. So just like with the other orchid, I will place a layer of medium at the bottom. This medium again came slightly damp, so I didn't have to dampen the sphagnum moss. 
all Repotme media are actually hand blend just before they ship it to you. That's why they are moist. But if you want to reuse this medium in time, do dampen the sphagnum moss. It is a lot easier to work with. And here we are, my orchid is done. Yet again, we're gonna check if we have bigger pockets, which we don't, but the medium is very, very fluffy inside. And the last orchid we're gonna repot is this medium-sized Phalaenopsis orchid, which was not overwatered, but it was dehydrating. If you can believe it, all of these roots were tightly packed into this little pot. Now, Phalaenopsis don't mind being snug, but if the pot is too tiny, it will not hold enough water to properly keep them hydrated. And so you will need to water them a lot more frequent. I'm guessing the flower shop couldn't really keep up with the watering needs of this orchid, therefore two of the flowers are already wilting before their time. So for this orchid I thought I would go for a 4 inch pot, but this is actually the pot she would be most suited to be in right now. I want to give her a one size bigger so we have room for another two years at least of growth. Therefore, I'm going to choose the five inch pot just like the first orchid we repotted. For this orchid, I will go with the Phalaenopsis Monterey Gold Imperial Orchid Mix, which is somewhere in between the previous two. It contains AAA New Zealand Sphagnum Moss, Medium Orchiata Monterey Pine Bark, Hydratin, large sponge rock and medium quart chips. So this is pretty much an all around type of medium. I could have gotten away with the dark mix as well, but this medium will make sure that I don't need to water way too often this orchid. I will be combining it with a very aerated pot, so I do believe the setup will be great, particularly in my summertime. So just like with the other types of medium, I'll put a layer on the bottom. We do this just to prevent the roots from escaping, which they will eventually do, but the more they stay inside the medium, the more they will be hydrated. I'll place medium around the orchid. I will be pressing down slightly because sphagnum moss doesn't really flow to the bottom, but I will make sure not to make it very compacted. And here are my three orchids repotted. Stay tuned for the next episode in our beginner-oriented series when I will tell you how to properly water all of these three Phalaenopsis orchids. For now though, I think it's time to end. Thank you Repot Me for making this video possible and providing the wonderful medium we worked with today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. You have more information in the description. And for those of you who are longtime subscribers, you know the drill. Like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, orchid updates and other fun orchid subjects. And for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. Hope you'll enjoy your time. I have tons and tons and tons of videos, some more geared to beginners, some more to more advanced growers. Just feel free to browse my archive and with that said I'll see you guys next time. Bye!